Hey, what's going on? Mike Gaston here. And today we're going to talk about a book that has the potential to transform your life. And no, that is not puffery, as we say in the advertising industry. This is the gosh honest truth. This book is phenomenal. The title of the book is How to Take Smart Notes. It's written by Dr. Zonka Ahrens. Easy to read, under 150 pages. And essentially what the book does is it reveals the system that helped Nicholas Luhrmann. He was one of the 20th century's most important social theorists. It helped Luhrmann publish over 70 books and over 400 scholarly articles. It helped Luhrmann put out an, an amazing amount, an insightful, complex, deep, highly respected amount of thinking and content. And what Dr. Ahrens does is he takes a look at Luhmann's system and he breaks it down and shares it with the world. He's leveraged it himself and it's quite powerful. So why should you care about this book? It's fascinating. Okay, take smart notes. Sounds like a snoozer. Let me tell you. And this is where we get into the transformation of your life. If you want to become someone who's a powerful thinker, who has original ideas, who's able to synthesize various ideas and come up with original content, original thinking, insights, this book is going to help you do that. There's a process to getting great ideas, and this book reveals it. Now, let's talk a little bit about the content, the structure. I said it was a simple book, under 150 pages. It's got three main sections. Essentially, the first section is everything you need to know. It's like, what do I need to know? How do I do it? Very easy. It just gives you the information right up front. The second section are four underlying principles that will help you as you go about your journey as a thinker, as a learner. And the last gives you six steps to successful writing. The last section just gives you these kind of tips or steps. Now, there are three main takeaways for me. First, that writing is thinking. Writing is thinking. The second takeaway is the value of an external system. And the third takeaway is the superiority of an emergent approach. Now, let me explain those three things. You're like, okay, sound kind of esoteric there, Brother Mike. What are you talking about? I don't know about you, but I've been writing content for many years, 20 plus years. And one of the mistakes, one of the errors that I've, that I've lived in is this idea that I have to have my thoughts I have to think everything through, and then I sit down and write out my thoughts. I share those thoughts with you. That the thinking happens before the writing. I've got to figure things out. And then I write to share what I've thought, what I've come up with, what I've come to understand. And Ahrens makes the argument that no, writing, the process of writing is actually a way to think, a very powerful way to think, that writing isn't something that happens after you've figured things out, after you've had your thoughts, but that writing is the process of thinking. You might be reading a passage of a book, and I think a lot of us do this, you, you want to underline something, you want to highlight it, you want to copy a quote down and put that quote on a card or in a file somewhere. And Luhrmann and Ahrens argue that no, that's not the way that you do it, that's not thinking, that's just copying. So what you want to do is take that passage and write about that passage and try to distill that passage down into your own words. Not just copy the author's ideas, but interact with it, write about it a little bit and distill it down. What do you think about that passage? If there's an important passage to you and you want to remember it, you want to own it, you want to integrate it into your way of working and thinking and doing, you need to write about it and distill it down into your own words. And that process of writing is thinking. And the same goes for an essay, the same goes for a script, the same goes for a book. No matter what you want to write about, you don't think first and then write. The actual process of writing is the thinking, and over time, that leads to a finished product. The second concept here is this power, the value of an external system. Luhmann uh, used this system that he called the Zettelkasten, which is German for essentially like a note box or a, a slip box. Think of a card catalog. And essentially what he would do is he would write these notes that he would take as he was reading something on a similar to like a three by five card, and he would store it in his Zettelkasten. And this is a system that he developed and perfected over many years. Uh, but the Zettelkasten is like the, the kind of core, the focal point of this whole approach. Now, the interesting thing about it is it's a thing, it's a box. Now, it can be a digital. There are, there are digital Zettel Kasten programs out there. People like to use apps like Rome Research and others like it. I myself like to use three by five cards and put them in a box. 
uh, because I like the process of physically writing something out. It's easier to remember that way for me. But the interesting thing about the Zettelkasten system is that you would write your notes down and then you could link them. And I'm not going to get into all the details of how you would do that, but it's essentially like hyperlinking. You would link your notes. So if one note related to another through a numbering system, you could link them. And the argument here, the takeaway here is that there's too much typically for the human mind to remember. There's too much for us to keep in. You read a book and you forget most of that book. You can underline the book. You can dog ear it. You can highlight it. You can database it if you're reading on a Kindle. But at the end of the day, we don't remember all this stuff. And the argument is that you need some type of external system, almost like a lattice work, to hold your thinking. And not just hold it as bits of data, as in, as independent thoughts or ideas or quotes, but to link them and integrate them and network them. So they start relating to each other. They begin to become contextualized. And by doing this, you start to see your thinking come together. Your thinking synthesizes. Your ideas come together. You see connections. You have insights and you develop original thoughts. All this from taking smart notes as you're reading a document. Now, there are three types of notes that uh, Zonke Ahrens suggests that we use as we go about this system. One is the fleeting note, uh, the other is the literature note, and the last one is the permanent note. So for instance, a fleeting note essentially keeps something to write on wherever you go. Uh, I like to use my iPad Pro typically because I'm using it all the time at work. And that's, you, you have a thought, you just jot it down. Maybe it's, I need to look into this, follow up on that. What about this question? You might have an insight or an aha or something you just want to pursue. It's a fleeting note. You don't give it much time. You just scribble it out. And then on a regular basis, either daily, weekly, you will sit and process those fleeting notes and go through them and say, oh yeah, I need to follow up on this. I wanted to uh, check or reread this segment of an article, or I want to take this thought that I had and maybe start to prepare a potential article or essay on this idea and start to work on that. But that's a fleeting note. The next is your literature note. Now, these are notes that you would take as you read something. I like to keep a moleskin style book with me and a pen. Uh, and as I'm reading a book, I might see something in there that stands out to me, a concept, a position, a question, uh, a piece of information. And I'm going to scribble a note on that. Now, typically, I'm not writing quotes. I'm not just sitting there saying, OK, uh, you know, let me get this quote in the page number. But I'm referencing the page number, and I'm distilling down what I've read into my own words, maybe my own thoughts on it. Maybe I'm referencing on the paper something else that I've read somewhere else, or another thought that I've had, or a situation that it applies to. And these are literature notes. And the final notes are going to be your permanent notes. This is where you go through your literature notes, you go through your fleeting notes as they apply, and you're choosing which ones are going to end up in your Zettelkasten, into your box or into your digital system. These are the things that you want to capture, the things that you want to own. And you're going to refine these. You're going to take these, distill them down. You're going to reference where you had your original idea from, where it comes from. But this is where you start to build your, your system, your lattice work, your database of ideas that are networked and connected together. The permanent notes serve you over a lifetime. And this is why I said earlier, I wish I knew about this system when I was younger because I've read, I don't even know how many books I've read in my lifetime. I love reading. And uh, the tons of dog ears and underlines. But at the end of the day, I don't remember all that stuff. I remember general ideas. I might remember topics or themes, concepts, but I have not internalized these and made them my own. And I don't have a physical system that I could go back to where they all relate to one another. I can say, hey, uh, here's the synthesized idea that I came up with after reading these authors. Often I might sit down and say, hey, I want to write an article on X and I start to write it and I churn through it and you lose energy. You're trying to you know, bang this thing out. What Lumen uh, would do and Aaron's advise is if you're reading multiple things, you're pursuing multiple interests, you're taking notes on different topics, you're going through your fleeting notes, you're going through your literature notes and your permanent notes, you're kind of growing your understanding, you're growing your thinking, but in multiple directions on multiple topics with various levels of specificity. This means that you can allow the work to emerge up as you're taking your notes, as you're distilling down your thoughts, and as your thoughts are interacting with new thoughts and you're synthesizing and coming up with new ideas, what happens is your topics, your content, uh, your writing bubbles up. It emerges from this note-taking process. It's something that 
reveals itself over time. And if you have enough of these projects going at once, you essentially just have to follow uh, where your interests are. You may be interested today in going deeper with one of your projects. And because they're emerging over time, you can work on that. And maybe a day or two later, you've lost interest in that, but you've got a couple other things. And, and Lumen would do this. He would go from project to project and he would just produce book after book after article after book after article after article. I mean, he was highly productive. And so he, he embraced and advocated for an emergent approach to his work. And those are the three things, this idea that writing is thinking, that we need to leverage the power of an external system for our thinking, and that lastly, we should take an emergent approach to our work. And by doing these things, by embracing these ideas and doing them, we'll see amazing, amazing results. Now, let me share with you real quick some of the personal impact that I've experienced from embracing and implementing this approach in my own life. First of all, I'm getting way more out of what I'm reading. It might take me a little bit longer to process a book. I might engage it a little differently, but I'm digging in and I'm getting so much more out of what I'm reading. I'm getting more understanding. I'm retaining more and I'm having more opportunities to apply what I'm learning to my current day situation, whether it's in my personal life or in my work life. Secondly, I'm developing uh, significantly more insights and I'm producing a lot more original thinking. I'm finding myself not just parroting what I've learned from an author, not just regurgitating some information I may have consumed somewhere else, but I'm taking the thoughts of one author, maybe the ideas of another author, I'm synthesizing those and coming up with my own insights, my own original thinking. I'm still able to give credit where credit is due, but it's, it's allowing me to ladder up in ways that I've never done before. And that's really satisfying just on a personal level. But that also is having direct impact on my consulting. This increased thinking and this increased ability, it's it's directly resulted in high paying consulting projects. I've come into situations where I've been able to provide insights into those situations uh, and solve significant problems and be remunerated quite handsomely for that. It's had a very direct impact on my life. And that's why I said at the beginning of this, I think this is going to have the potential to transform your life because it's having such an impact on mine. Now, here's what I liked about the book. Aaron's does a great job. He's a great writer. It's highly digestible. He leads with the facts, and, and it's it's very accessible. He weaves in uh, Nicholas Luhmann in a way that's very pleasant, lots of real-world examples, easy to read, and so on. Also easy to go back to, easy to reference, well-organized. What I didn't like, I found myself wanting more data, information on how exactly do I do this Zettelkasten? How does this system work? Now, the upside is there are there's a Reddit, there's a subreddit devoted to it. There are blogs online. There's a bunch of stuff available. So, you know, you can access how other people do it. And, and what I realized afterwards is there really isn't a hard and fast way. There, there isn't like a right way and a wrong way. But there are some things that I think could be there to get the neophyte like myself started. Arns does a great job. He shares things like software resources and so on. But for a pen and paper, uh, warrior like myself, I just I would have liked a little bit more handholding. I don't fault him for that. I think the book is what it is, and I don't think it's weaker because of that. But if there was anything that I didn't like, I just wanted a section with a little bit more hands-on detail. But that's what the internet is for, I guess. Lastly, uh, why should you read it? Well, if it isn't apparent to you already, uh, I think if you are someone that wants to produce original, deep, thoughtful, meaningful thinking if you want to produce content, if you want to build a career based on your originality and the depth of your thought, then you should read this book. At the least, uh, it will tickle your fancy, but I think at the most, it will help you become uh, the best version of yourself possible. Guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this was useful to you. I will put a link to the book on Amazon in the description below. Of course, if you hit that link, I might get a couple nickels, from our, from our good friend, Jeff Bezos. So please do that. Uh, but even if you don't do that, I hope that you found this useful. Check this book out, get it at your library, order it on Amazon, however you get your hands on it, read this book. Tell me what you think. If you've done this before, if you've used this system, leave a, a message in the comments. If you have questions, do the same. And if you haven't done so already, well, you know what I'm gonna say, smash that subscribe button. Guys, I love you all. And I'll catch you in the next video.